Hello, today we have invited our city of Miami mayor, Mr. Tomas Regalado. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you for being with us today. Mr. Mayor, previously you commented on the city of Miami having its own regional center for the EB-5 residential visas. Could you please cl clarify for us what is an EB-5 residential visa? Yes, the EB-5 uh, is an investor visa. It's a, a program that has been in place uh, for more than 20 years. However, now uh, has uh, gone viral uh, because uh, a lot of people from uh, Latin America and Asia are using uh, the investor visa. Actually, the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate just uh, a few weeks ago uh, passed uh, a resolution extending the program and the president signed it for the next uh, three years. What this, what this is, is that any uh, foreign investor that wishes to get the green card or the resident card for his, his wife, his uh, children under 21 years old, can come to the United States, invest one million dollars and create uh, 10 jobs for two years. Uh, immediately after uh, being clear with the money, he or she will get uh, a resident card which will be provisional. And then at the end of the two years, if uh, the entity, the government uh, testified that the jobs were there for two years, that person will get a permanent uh, resident. Uh, that is a model that has been used uh, throughout the United States uh, for many years now. Uh, but uh, in terms of the city of Miami, uh, it would be different. Only the city of Dallas and the state of Vermont have officially uh, given, been given by the State Department and Homeland Security a, a regional center. And what it means for Miami is uh, that if we are approved, and we hope that we will be in the next three months uh, by the State Department, uh, the four walls of the city of Miami, all the municipality, will be eligible for any investment from abroad. That is, if there is a project uh, in downtown or overtown, a building, a restaurant, if the city certifies that that project will create uh, 10 jobs, then the U.S. government will uh, approve the application and move on uh, with the process. Now, we do not uh, do the betting process for the money. That's the U.S. State Department, Homeland Security, the money has to be very uh, carefully studied and determined that it's good money. Once that the federal government does that, then the city offers one project. And uh, the, if the investors feel that that's the right investment for them, then the, the project uh, is approved and, and the visa is approved. Great. What is the advantage for the international investors to have a city-operated regional center rather than a privately owned regional center? Because the privately owned regional center are project specific. The, the, when when uh, immigration attorneys create uh, a regional center, they have to create it for one specific project. And they cannot have any flexibility of moving the investor to other uh, kind of um, business enterprise. Mm -hmm. In the case of the city, the investor can choose. We have a menu. We have um, a, a, a medical building. We have a, a, a huge restaurant complex. We have a mixed-use uh, condo building, retail office, uh, hotel, uh, we have uh, a facility, and, and then the investor can choose whether or not he or she wants to invest here and get their money in return. Because, you know, we don't deal with the, the business deal between the investor and, and, and the person doing the project. So the, the benefit 
is that any project in the city of Miami is available for the investor. The benefit is that the city of Miami doesn't make money. We don't do finder's fee. We don't charge $100,000 to an investor. So that it's more attractive to, to the investors uh, to come to Miami. It has been a success in Dallas. Uh, it has been a success in the state of Vermont. Uh, and we feel that uh, we're going to be the second uh, city in the U.S. that will move on that path. Great. What is your opinion of the national real estate market and how does it compare with the current real estate market of the greater Miami-Dade County? Well, the, the, the national real estate market is, is moving along, but not so fast as in the city of Miami. Uh, I would think that we are blessed because uh, the, the real estate market in the city of Miami uh, is moving at the pace that not even the experts uh, thought that it could uh, happen. Uh, in December of 2009, there were 20,500 condo units empty in the uh, downtown corridor, in the Brickell uh, corridor in Midtown. Uh, the expert uh, told us at the time that it would take 53 months to fill those condos. The market will move at a slow pace. Um, just uh, six months ago, we, we had 98% occupancy in all those uh, units, 70% uh, buyers, the rest renters. Uh, so the market is moving, and it, it, a sign is uh, that uh, foreclosures are down in the city. Uh, we just did a, a program with uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, they gave away $14,000 to every qualifying person that would buy a house in the city of Miami, and at least like 30 to 40 people qualify. So the real estate market is moving uh, in Miami much better than in the rest of the country. Fantastic. From your perspective, what makes the Miami market so attractive to both local and international investors? I think it's uh, because uh, Miami is a Latin American city with the safeguards of the United States of America, with the laws of uh, the U.S. with the guarantees that the banks and, uh, and the stability of the governments uh, have uh, for the money. This is not a volatile uh, society. This, 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 this is not like a government coming in and, and seizing uh, a bank or something like that. Uh, so it, it's, 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 a, it's a very safe environment. Uh, for the money of the investors, and uh, it's a city that has a lot of cultures, uh, a lot of nationalities, a lot of amenities. Uh, so that's that's what we offer, other than the climate. You know. Great. The city of Miami has many buildings under construction. Have you seen any increase in the rate of new building permits as well as submitted permits that were on hold previously? Right. Uh, it is important uh, to s understand uh, that uh, we were the epicenter of the crisis, that the city of Miami overbuilt. And it was here where the whole thing started in the city of Miami, back in 2005, when developers started building and building and building and uh, they flooded the market. Uh, n now we we believe that uh, we're gotten to the point where the, the, the market is driving the construction, that, that developers don't just go out on the limb and build something, hoping that they will sell it. They first sell it, and then they build it. And this is what we're seeing in the city of Miami. And if you remember many years ago, 2004, 2005, you would look at downtown, and, they, and there were like 62 cranes, you know, those construction yes. cranes. Then in 2008, 2009, they went away. And, and now in 2012, they're back. Uh, we have in downtown 12. So it, it's a show 
that uh, that uh, construction is back. Okay, great. Could you briefly comment on new buildings projects such as Miami World Century, the Seven Star Hotel scheduled to be constructed on the site of the All Miami Herald, City Century in Brico, among others? Uh, yes, we um, uh, one of the major projects in the city of Miami for many years is City Center. It's a it's a Swire company project. Uh, it's a one million square feet uh, project. It's nine acres uh, of land. It's on their way. It will be done early 14. Uh, it would bring to the city of Miami just in property taxes seven and a half million dollars. And uh, the same ratio to the county and to the school board, uh, it would create 4,000 permanent jobs. Uh, and it's going to be uh, an anchor for Brickell and, and downtown. Uh, and Swire is a very respected company. They, 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 they own and operate Brickell Key, the Mandarin Hotel, and, and they're very successful at it. In terms of the of the Genting projects in, at the Miami Herald site, we do not have any plans from them. Uh, they have not presented uh, other than what they announced uh, a year and a half ago, uh, their vision of, of the project. We do know that they want to start demolishing uh, the Herald building in June of next year. They have already said that they will pull the permits for demolition. Uh, but we don't know the scope of the program, although they say that even without casinos, they, they will build uh, uh, a very major uh, project. So that is, that is on, the, on the pipeline. We have uh, probably uh, uh, at least 12 to 13 new projects that will be announced. One of them, which we believe will be the signature uh, building, is the tallest building uh, in, in the southeast part of the United States, south of Manhattan, uh, that will be in Brickell, more than 80 stories. And so uh, I, I believe the construction is coming back. Fantastic. Mr. Mayor, it's my understanding that by the latter part of 2014, the Port of Miami will be able to accommodate the mega vessel that will have access to the enlarged Panama Canal. It is true. <laughs> Sorry, can I repeat that one? Sorry. I'll answer. Okay. Uh, okay, it's my I'll answer the question. You want to do that again? Yeah, let me do it. Okay. Okay. It is my understanding that by the latter part of 2014, the Port of Miami will be able to accommodate the mega vessel that will have access through the enlarged Panama Canal. Is it true that it will be make our port the only port south of Virginia capable of handling such large ships? Could you comment on this ongoing improvement for the port? Yes, uh, it is uh, a milestone. Uh, it is uh, one of the most important things that ever happened to the Port of Miami. The Panama Canal is being dredged uh, to accommodate bigger ships uh, from 42 feet to 50 feet. Actually, uh, the Port of Miami is 42 feet, and uh, it, the dredging will be uh, 8 feet. So it will be the same uh, depth of the Panama Canal. Uh, actually, the, the project is called Panamax, uh, as the Panama Canal. And what it does is that, that it would be able to accommodate uh, ships with more containers. Because when you have ships with more containers, uh, it goes down more. And they need eight feet uh, more. To, to, to navigate uh, through the port. Uh, the money has been allocated from the state of Florida. Uh, the U.S. Corp of Engineers already is putting out the, the bids, uh, and probably uh, dredging will commence uh, early next year. It is supposed to be done by, uh, by February, March of 14, when the Panama Canal of dredging will be over, and uh, and hopefully this will bring thousands of new jobs because the more containers that you can bring into the port, uh, the more people you need to handle. So it will bring a lot of jobs. 
Perfect. I was with my next question. How do you see this affecting the labor situation and the real estate market in South Florida? It, 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 you know, it's um, the, the amount of jobs, direct or indirect, because of the dredging of the port, is estimated to be 20,000. Uh, and it, it, it is, this is true because, uh, you know, containers, now you're going to have a, a, a railroad coming in and out of the port plus uh, the trucks that come in and out. Now, the tunnel is supposed to be done by year 14. And when, when this is open, then you have three ways to get out of the port with the containers. And, uh, and that would create uh, thousands of jobs. That would bring people to Miami. And that would, of course, uh, move the real estate market. Fantastic. I have heard some people say that in not, in, I'm sorry. I have heard some people say that in the not too distant future, downtown Miami could be, I'm sorry. I have heard some people say that in the not too distant future, downtown Miami could begin to look like the Manhattan of the South. Could you comment on this? I think, uh, I, I think that the people that are saying that are correct. Uh, is because, uh, number one, the Brickell area has uh, become a hub for the banking industry, um, the attorneys, the investment uh, firms, and, uh, you know, many, many more uh, offices are coming to Brickell. Uh, with the retail component and with the new restaurants, yes, it would, it would be something like Manhattan, just the climate is different. Uh, but uh, but I, I think that there is a great future uh, for the area and for the city. Well, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for thank being you. with us today and for this important information for our clients. Thank you. Thank you.